Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and if you just bought a sewing machine and want to learn how to use it, you came to the right place. This video will cover the basics of using a sewing machine along with some must-have sewing supplies and what stitch settings to use. This is a beginner video so I won't go into too much detail but hopefully it's enough to get you started on some easy projects. Let's get started. First, plug the power cord and press your foot into the side of the machine. Then turn your machine on. I have a computerized sewing machine so the screen will light up and all the functions get resetted. Your machine should already come with a needle installed but if not, check to see if your machine has a compartment that holds extra needles, bobbins, and sewing tools. If you run out of spare needles, you can purchase a pack of Schmetz Universal Needles. They come in a variety of sizes. 7010 can be used for fabrics like silk, 8010 is a go-to needle you could use for everyday projects, and 9014 can be used for heavier weight material like denim. To install or replace your needles, slide the needle in so that the flat side is facing the back, push it up to the top, and screw it in place. Most inexpensive machines still come with a few different presser foots to use, but it is something to consider when shopping for a machine, making sure it has the basic accessories. The one that is already attached is usually the main foot. To switch presser foots, all you have to do is reach your hand behind, and there should be a little lever you press to release the foot. To add a presser foot back on, slide the foot underneath and push the little bar that's in the middle up until it clicks in place. When you start and finish sewing, you'll need to raise and lower your presser foot by reaching to the back and pulling down or pushing up the lever. Now we need to thread our machine. Most basic machines have the same threading system, but do read your manual first and figure out the right way to thread your machine. This goes for the rest of the setup as well. Sewing machines need two threads attached to work. There's the top thread that is on the spool and the bottom thread that is on a bobbin. The brand of thread I like to use is Guterman and it is 100% polyester. First, place your spool of thread at the top wherever it's supposed to be on your machine. Mine lays sideways but yours might stand up. Next, grab your empty bobbin. There should be some included with your machine but if not, you can purchase a pack of plastic bobbins which I recommend you do so anyways because you'll eventually need to use a variety of different colored threads. Just make sure the bobbins are compatible with your machine. Before threading the machine, we need to fill up our bobbin. There's normally a little stub on top where you place the bobbin. And depending on your machine, you either need to slide the stub over to enable the bobbin threading, or you might have to pull out the hand wheel on the side to enable the bobbin threading. Read your manual to see which it is. Once my bobbin is in place, I follow the arrow and bring my spool of thread all the way around to my bobbin and wrap the thread around a few times to hold it in place. My machine actually has this cool thread cutter right here, so I just slide it there after wrapping the thread a few times. You can also place the thread into one of the holes in your bobbin to keep it out of the way once it starts winding. To wind the bobbin, just step on your foot pedal and the thread should start wrapping around tightly. My machine stops on its own once it's filled up, then I switch the stub back to the other side so it's no longer in bobbin winding mode. Separate the bobbin thread from the main spool and place the bobbin in its home. My machine has a top bobbin loader with a clear cover so I can see when I run out of thread. Once I place the bobbin inside, I pull the thread out a little and go back to thread the top of the machine. Like I said, most regular sewing machines have very similar threading systems, but you basically just follow the arrows. 
The only part you want to make sure you catch correctly is the hook that is inside this crack right here. If you can't see the metal hook that you're supposed to thread, just turn your hand wheel and it should move up. Bring the thread down to the needle and secure it in place behind the little hook. Then all you have to do is thread your needle. You can do it by hand or if your machine has an automatic needle threader, you can use that as well. Once your needle is threaded, pull the thread out and hold onto it with your left hand. With your right hand, turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle moves down to the bottom. And as you keep turning the wheel to bring the needle back up, tug on the top thread you're holding with your left hand to pull the bobbin thread up to the top. Bring both strands to the back of your machine so they're out of the way and we're ready for sewing. The first must-have sewing tools are fabric scissors because they're super sharp and cut clean lines. If you want to invest even more into sewing, you can get a rotary cutter and cutting mat, which you see me use all the time in my videos. But it's not necessary for beginners. Next, I recommend you have a straight ruler and get a clear one so you can see underneath. And a tape measure to measure the body. The next must-have tool is a seam ripper. I own many seam rippers because they're always disappearing and I use them all the time for undoing mistakes and taking apart clothes. 100% cotton fabric like this is very easy to work with and I recommend making beginner projects with them to start off with. Typically, you have two layers you're sewing together and those two layers usually have a right side and a wrong side. To make sure your raw edges and seams aren't showing on the outside of your project, you have to face the two layers right sides together. When sewing any project, you also need to include seam allowance. For example, if I wanted to make a casing for this card and I just simply trace the size of the card and cut out my fabric without adding seam allowance, after I sew it, the card won't be able to fit inside because it's a lot smaller now. I normally add a half inch seam allowance to all my projects. Here's the case I created with seam allowance. You can see it fits snug and perfectly around the card. Another beginner tip when sewing squares or rectangles is to sew down to the corner and then raise your presser foot, turn the fabric and continue sewing the other side. The next helpful sewing tool I recommend you have are sewing pins or clips. After facing your pieces right sides together, use your pins to hold everything in place. With the presser foot lifted up, slide your fabric underneath of it and line it up with whatever your seam allowance is. Most machines will have the measurements marked on the metal sewing plate, but that can still be confusing to follow. So for beginners, I recommend you mark your seam lines with chalk or disappearing ink pen or even a bar of soap. Just make sure it's something temporary and won't stain the fabric. My favorite pens to use are the double-sided purple and blue markers. I also use a bar of soap if I'm working on dark fabric or fabrics that don't mark easily. And I also use chalk. Another way to mark your seam allowance if you don't want to mark your fabric is to place a tape or rubber band at however much your seam allowance is to use as a guideline for the edge of your fabric to follow. And if you're still confused at where these measurements should even be on your machine, take your ruler and measure from the needle to however much your seam allowance is so you know for sure it's correct. My stitch setting is at its default straight stitch and my machine automatically resets this straight stitch every time I turn it on. Whenever I need to do a basting stitch, which is a temporary stitch, I just increase my stitch length to the highest number my machine will let me go up to. And when I'm top stitching, I'll bump it up to 3 or 3.5. The most important step is to backstitch whenever you start sewing and at the end when you finish sewing. If you don't, your thread will just unravel and your seam will come undone. The only time I wouldn't backstitch is when I'm sewing a basting stitch or a temporary stitch to hold things together. To backstitch, I first sew a couple stitches forward by stepping on my foot pedal and then I hold onto my backstitch button to sew a few stitches back. And that's it. Now you can continue sewing the rest of your seam forward. If you're new to sewing, be gentle stepping on your foot pedal, especially if you don't have a speed control setting. 
Once you reach the end of whatever you're sewing, hold the back stitch button again and sew a few stitches back and go forward again before lifting the presser foot and taking the fabric out. To finish off your raw edges, you can either use pinking shears, which creates zigzag edges to keep the fabric from fraying, or you can use a zigzag or overlock stitch setting if you have it on your machine. Even some of the most inexpensive machines have this overlock stitch setting. The machine or your manual will tell you if you need to switch your presser foot to use this stitch. There are many more ways to finish raw edges like using a serger or bias binding or a French seam but the techniques do start getting more advanced, so let's just use what we have for now. Also, if your projects have a lining and will hide the raw edges, you don't need to finish the raw edges because they'll be covered anyways. A quick and easy way to hem the bottom of cotton fabric is to fold the edge over twice and sew along the edge of the lifted side. You don't wanna sew in the middle because it will cause your hem to flip over. I sewed it along the middle for an example, and you can see clearly when you're hemming it along the middle, the hem starts to lift up. For a nice clean hem and to make the sewing process faster, you can press it first with your iron. All right, the next beginner fabric, a lot of beginners like to use, and so did I when I first learned how to sew, and that is knit fabric. This is a jersey knit. And I think I like to use it as a beginner because it's stretchy. When you cut it, the edges don't fray and give you a hard time. You don't have to hem it if you don't want to. And if you're making something fitted with stretchy fabric, you don't have to add a zipper. But I soon realized that sewing stretchy fabric was a lot more challenging than I thought because I didn't know the right stitch setting to use or have the right needle. Something I wish I knew when I first learned how to sew and was using stretch fabric was that a zigzag stitch keeps the stretchiness of your fabric versus using a regular straight stitch, which will make your seams pop when you stretch the fabric. What I like even more than a zigzag stitch is a stretch stitch, which is also a zigzag stitch but a lot more narrow so it looks more like a straight line. Another important thing you need when working with stretch fabric is a ballpoint needle or jersey knit needle. A ballpoint needle is a lot more rounded at the tip so it doesn't tear the elasticity of the fabric, which is especially helpful when you need to seam rip because you won't have a bunch of tears in your fabric. You also should never stretch your fabric as you sew. Whether you're working with knit fabric or woven fabric, do not pull, push, or tug your fabric when you're sewing because you will distort the shape. Instead, just let your sewing machine do the work. There are feed dogs underneath the fabric that help move it along. So even if I let go, the machine will keep moving the fabric through. All you have to do is guide the fabric so you're sewing on your seam line. My last tip is for sewing curves. Eventually, you're going to graduate from your straight seam sewing projects to something with more curves. A great practice is to draw a spiral on a piece of paper, take out the thread from your machine, and sew along the curve. The trick is to sew a couple stitches, then lift your presser foot and turn your project to follow the shape of the curve. You'll continue this stop and go sewing process all the way to get the best curve seam. Now you can sew something like a fitted face mask flawlessly. All 
All right, that's the end of my how to use a sewing machine video for beginners. I hope it helps you out and you have fun experimenting with different projects and I'll see you next time. Bye.